North Korea, the mecca of the film industry. Everybody worth their salt in Hollywood is dying to make a North Korean film. These movies have it all. Choices, food, the circus. It's truly the American dream. What I'm showing you today is unlike anything you've ever seen. Watching a North Korean film is like watching cinema from an alternate reality. Hardly anybody outside of North Korea has seen this movie, and I am mighty excited to share it with you. It kept me captivated, defied expectation, what? befuddled me. I don't know what just happened the last two minutes. It made me laugh. Uh, North Korea is so, you're so funny. <laughs> and the winner for the best film of all time goes to Comrade Kim Goes Flying. North Korea's first and only girl power movie about a woman who works in the coal mines but has bigger dreams of working in the circus. This film exudes feminine power as it is North Korea's most progressive film yet, making women everywhere feel that maybe they too can fly high. See for yourself. <laughs> they can only take the photo if she's smiling, because women look better if they're smiling, you know? So yeah, this movie is a little misguided. It doesn't really appear to be as progressive as it wants to be. It almost feels as though Michael Scott wrote and directed the thing. How can I be so illogical and flighty and unpredictable and emotional? Well, maybe I learned something from women after all. But much like Michael Scott, this movie's heart is in the right place. Now, I am obligated to tell you that Kim Jong-un will be watching this video. And he specifically said that he will be reading every single comment. So, right now is your one and only opportunity to say whatever you want to Kim Jong-un. So, so long as it's nice. In Comrade Kim Goes Flying, our main character wants nothing more than to take flight like a bird. <laughs> We then cut to her trying desperately to get her father's attention, but he pretends not to notice her because he's disappointed that he has a daughter instead of a son. Fortunately for him, Kim can't get through this gate to reach her father. What she can do, however, is get over the gate with a barrel, a plank, the help of two boys, and a dream. This is great. <laughs> We cut to present day and by golly, Kim is all grown up now. Yet they still have her riding on trains that were made for children. Her full name is Kim Young Mi. She's a coal miner that has a passion for acrobatics. <laughs> and when she's given a construction job in Pyongyang, which happens to be where the circus is, she takes the job immediately, despite her father's hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> However, she doesn't have a ride to get to Pyongyang, so she hitchhikes. And I think I'm just gonna let the rest of this scene play out because it defies explanation. <laughs> what? This scene was incomprehensible to me, but I knew that it had to mean something. So in order to fully understand it, 
I popped on the director's commentary. I did. 토론하는 내용을 발췌한 것인데. But uh, naturally, I needed a translator. So I contacted the most knowledgeable person YouTube has ever witnessed, a master of wisdom and a sommelier of North Korean culture. What are you doing? Oh, we're just filming a review of a movie. Oh, I thought you were going to do some street magic. Street magic? Yeah! So I reached out to Hugbees. You're probably familiar with this guy's work. On his channel, he removes all the misinformation that they put into the TV show, How It's Made, and narrates over the footage himself to tell you how it's actually made. A conveyor belt moves the dough to a vat. The vat compresses the dough into a sheet, and the sheet is passed under a machine that makes it less likely to be shot by police. And lucky for us, Hugby's agreed to transcribe that DVD commentary. So let's see what those guys are actually saying. Interesting bit of trivia here. Uh, this isn't our original actress. On the first and second take of this shot, the car didn't stop. And let's just say a North Korean woman's skull isn't much for the might of a luxury SUV. The actor in this scene playing the man looking for the kindergarten is actually famed Korean child diddler Chung Ho Lee. We figured that his real life experience here would add a little bit of flavor to the role. Tricking a stranger but then leaving your lunch as an apology is actually a common Korean prank that we play pretty regularly. Uh, I would normally play it in the streets with some of my friends in high school, but after four of them were executed for doing it, we kind of gave up on it. Once Kim arrives in Pyongyang, we're treated to a montage of North Korea's most iconic monuments. <gasps> But on my second viewing of this film, I noticed an interesting detail behind the Juche Tower. Can you see it? Look just a little closer. That's private internet access! Kim Jong-un isn't the biggest fan of these guys, though, because internet is so private over there that most people don't have access to it. I even used private internet access to visit Google Translate. But it's not enough to just tell you guys about it. I gotta tell even more people. Hi, sweetie. Hey. What? Oh, okay. In Tiones, Siobisu, Jigyonga, Netiwoku. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Guanlija, Mik, Yangbu, Jam Yal Guan. All right, my goodness, thank you. You're welcome. I need that. So, private internet access works with all major streaming services, so you have unrestricted access to all your favorite content anywhere in the world. Anyway, uh, make sure to use my code RENSREVIEWS to get uh, a lot of money off, like 82% or something like that. All right, let's get back to the video. After stepping off the bus, Kim has no clue how to get to the circus. But this stranger she sat next to on the bus is more than willing to help her find it. And when they get to the circus, they don't have any tickets, so Kim lies to sneak her way inside. <laughs> And then we're treated to a live performance of a circus act, which was all shot practically at the actual circus. It's very impressive filmmaking. If this film were made here in America, Hollywood would have cheaped out and used a green screen or some other kind of special effect. But there's no trickery afoot here. North Korea would never. After watching the show, she decides to audition to be a trapeze artist herself. But she's never trapezed before. Nobody believes in her. Nobody but me. After her failure, she returns to her coal mining duties, where we're shown prideful shots of her and her comrades working incredibly hard at a construction site, and they just look so darn happy while doing it. Over here, our construction workers generally look pretty miserable, and they're also terribly deviant, as they're always whistling at my girlfriend every time she walks by. And then they call me a c lover. And then they whistle at me too, even though I'm a boy. 
Feeling ashamed after her audition, Comrade Kim vows to never do acrobatics again. But the next day when she's at some sort of, like, party thing, she sees an acrobat that was at her audition. <laughs> and with her passion for circus reignited, she now attempts to tackle her fear of heights. Okay, okay, look, I don't have much time. I gotta tell you guys some. The secret, shh, the secret, shh, the secret police were just telling me that if, if I didn't give this film enough praise, that there will be dire consequences, okay? So, shh, the other, shh, this, but last night in my mailbox, I found this. Okay, look, from what I gather, looks like Kim Jong-un has a really weak bladder or something like that, right? Like he has to go pee once every eight to 11 minutes. Or like, that's, that's what that means. So if my calculations are correct, that means he's right now, he's on the toilet, right? So that means I only have a very limited amount of time to tell you guys some actual thoughts that I have on this movie because he's still trying to figure out YouTube. He doesn't know how to pause it yet. <sighs> Fuck. And I'll be honest with you, the movie is pretty good, but it feels like it was made for children. It's so patronizing and full of exposition. And I noticed that every time Kim accomplishes something, it's because a man helped her do it. Her dad allowed her to go to Pyongyang. A man drove her to the bus. A man drove the bus. A man had to show her where the circus was. Another fellow reignited her passion for acrobatics. And a man is single-handedly helping her overcome her fear of heights. Since, you know, something like that is usually a team effort. But hey, you know what? It's entirely possible that I could just be overthinking all of this. Welcome back, respected comrade general secretary. You tuned in at just the right time. I got a surprise for you, buddy. Come on, follow me into the Michaels, pal. <laughs> This is the one. <sighs> Doesn't it look great? He's gonna love it. So now, after being up in such a high place for so long, Kim was able to overcome her fear of heights. Her boss got rid of her anxiety with an advanced method called exposure therapy, which is not to be confused with the exposure therapy Louis C.K. used to do. And with her fear of heights demolished, her boss immediately goes to the circus on her behalf to find an acrobat that will train her. <laughs> I don't know what just happened the last two minutes. I know. Why he was there, like what? And of course her boss enlists comrade Jang Phil, the very fellow that teased Kim earlier, to be her acrobatic instructor. And it's just so surreal to see these two worlds collide. But with a heart full of resentment, Kim doesn't want his help. So in order to make him prove his worth, she challenged him to a standard tournament of champions. Yes, you guessed it, a cement mixing competition. <laughs> the cement mixing scene. I'm so proud of how this one came out. Very, very good directing here. As you all know, as ordered by the government, we're supposed to mix the cement in a clockwise fashion. But for uh, one of these takes, the uh, strong male actor you see here actually decided to mix it in a counterclockwise fashion. I'm not exactly sure what came up of it, but I have not seen him since before. Good. <laughs> So, in retaliation of Kim being mocked, her boss decides that the entire construction brigade is going to put on their very own circus act. 
경여 정목을 들고 나간다. 특색 있게. 어쩌저쩌다 보는. 압수라. 아무리라도 합격을 못한다는 법이 있습니까? However, in order for the construction crew to put on an acrobatic show, Kim needs the head of construction to create specialized acrobatic equipment for them. But the foreman won't make it for her unless she can defeat him in an arm wrestle. <laughs> But in order to arm wrestle him, she needs to first defeat two other guys in an arm wrestle, and then she needs to get documented proof that she beat them. So the first guy simply signed a document saying that he lost. <laughs> But the second guy absolutely destroyed her. <laughs> Yet he still wound up signing the document saying that he lost. Now it's time for her to arm wrestle the foreman. With the biggest arms in the construction crew, it looked as though Kim had absolutely no chance of defeating him. Now our gaggle of construction workers has everything they need to train for their circus performance, and train they did. And when the time came, they put on quite a show. And it was here, after Kim had achieved something noteworthy, that she finally became beautiful. And the guy who teased her earlier falls head over heels in love with her. He's now forced to swallow his pride so that he can make this prideful swallow a member of the acrobatic team where she is accepted with open arms. Her working class compatriots are more than happy to see her go, as their team is now that much stronger without a woman slowing them down. The folks over at the circus train her diligently. She gets flipped like a house, she sweats like a pig, and gets thrown around like a woman. <laughs> At this point in the movie, things become a little bit more familiar, cinematically speaking. During her training, Kim finds the work to be far too hard and she just about gives up. But she's able to find the strength to dig deep and keep on moving, keep trucking. After that, we're then treated to a montage of her training. And during this montage, Kim and the other guy had developed quite a romantic connection. A connection so deep, in fact, that they're able to communicate telepathically. <laughs> They're talking telepathically. Yeah. So now it's showtime, baby. Everyone is watching. Even the entire construction crew has come to see Kim, who now needs to pull off an elegant quadruple somersault. Completing this move will cement her position as a trapeze artist. And some might say that Kim is hard-headed, that she bulldozed her way through the circus. Anyone who thinks that is coal. Coal is ice. And off she goes, soaring through the air like a crane, twirling end over end, before landing in the arms of North Korea's biggest hunk. She's a tractor to him, big time. And if it were up to her, she would scaffold onto his hands forever. It's pretty safe to assume that he had a massive coner. And there was no doubt in anybody's mind that tonight, she would be getting jackhammered, nailed, and screwed until the sun came up. Road work, head. I sure hope she does. People in the audience were moved to tears. Kim has achieved her goals, and for the final scene of the movie, Comrade Kim goes flying in an airplane.
I found this movie to be really enjoyable. I laughed several times, the music was wonderful, these shots of iconic North Korean architecture seriously got my blood pumping. The scenery of North Korea is just beautiful. It's no wonder nobody ever leaves the country. The movie is shot with surprising competence, with thoughtful and dynamic camera work. Most of the movie was shot on location with minimal green screen or CG. The actress that plays Kim is incredibly likable, and she did a lot of her own stunts and acrobatic work too, which is always a plus. It is incredibly evident that the cast and crew put everything they had into this movie. But that's only because if they didn't, their families would be executed before their very eyes. This movie has a certain quality to it that is very hard to describe. It feels pure, wholesome, and whimsical. It is genuinely passionate about what it wants to be, and it comes off as adorable. This movie is wholly unique to North Korea. I have never seen anything like this before, and I want to see more. Okay, it's been another 8 to 11 minutes, so I think we can safely assume that our supreme leader here has taken a tinkle. Which means, I can tell you what I really think of Comrade Kim Goes Flying. I just find it so funny that this movie is supposed to be a celebration of women, and it accidentally comes across as being sort of sexist. It really gives you a sense of how women are viewed over there. It seems like the women of North Korea and Rodney Dangerfield have something in common. I mean, that's the story of my life. No respect. I don't got no respect at all. You They're not funny. I mean, the writers force Kim to partake in this test of physical strength. Rather than having her solve a problem of some type to prove that she has intelligence or internal strength. Like maybe one of the foreman's workers hasn't been performing well lately and she goes and talks to the guy to lift his spirits with words of wisdom and positivity. But the arm wrestling scene is where I noticed yet another pattern emerging. Anytime Kim actually gets something done on her own, she does so with lies and manipulation. Earlier, she didn't have a ticket to get into the circus, so she lied and said that her boss was her older brother and was able to sneak in because of it. She lied to the guy who needed to get to a kindergarten and made her drive away from it so that she could catch the bus. And she lied about defeating two guys in an arm wrestle. But that genuinely makes me wonder. Is North Korea sexist? Uh, or, or, um, or maybe I'm sexist. So here we are just one movie in, and I already feel as though I've been lied to about North Korea. I was told that they're starving over there, yet there appears to be food on every corner. So much food, in fact, that people are giving bouncers coupons for free bread, while others are offering up their meals to complete strangers. Complete strangers who offer up their assistance to one another just because they all live in the same country. The people here look as though they're happy working. And you know what? Maybe North Korea isn't as bad as the news makes it out to be. All right, I've been doing a lot of research on North Korea, and it turns out their favorite game to play over there is Kim Jong Uno. Sorry. That's their second favorite game. Their third favorite game is shoots and don't ask questions. Okay, so I'd love to turn making Korean movie reviews into a series because this is probably the most fun I've had making a video in years. And Kim Jong-un said that if this video hits 100,000 views, we can make another one. But honestly, I think we'll be lucky if we hit 20,000. But I have so many ideas for this series and I've even written a song that I don't have the resources to bring to life quite yet. And there's so many North Korean movies out there that I would love to take a look at. First and foremost, I gotta thank my patrons because every single dollar they give me goes right back into this channel and allows me to do stuff like this. Also, I gotta give a shout out to Hugbees for appearing in this video and he's making some North Korean videos of his own sometime soon, or so he tells me. So make sure you go check him out. And I gotta give a shout out also to my girlfriend who co-wrote this video. Pretty cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been an absolute blast. I hope you enjoyed it. And you know what? I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.